Yo, what is happening, people? Y'all already know what it is. Switch Life Garage back again with your boy KT. Y'all already know we ain't tripping. We only pimping. Say, so, man, y'all already know. Working on the truck just a little bit. Got a few little things I want to do here and there, but really one of the main things I need to do for this video is fix my drive shaft. As you guys already know, on the previous video, when I completed, pretty much restored and rebuilt that rear end, and, uh, you know, I probably put less than 100 miles and that drive shaft already you know the bearing on the drive shaft already giving me some problems but it's all good you know the truck isn't a brand new truck it's from 03 and the parts a lot of the parts mainly look like it was from factory so I need to go ahead and change that out but of course I'm going to show you guys a few little things I need to go ahead and do to it so without taking any more time let's go ahead and get right into it also you better be subscribed and I hope you drop a comment Let's get it. One thing I want to change about the exterior appearance is that awfully big, tall antenna. I really don't like when vehicles have this big antenna. I mean, probably if you're using the uh, radio, it'll actually benefit you, but it looks pretty stupid to be honest. I actually purchased a little short antenna. This is probably one of the shortest antennas that you'll ever find. Here's the antenna that I bought. I actually just picked it up off of Amazon Raptor Installation Accessories. I guess that's the company. You could either use this one here, I believe it is an inch and a half, or this little stub one. This little spike we also have some attachments if we need to go ahead and change anything as far as for the fitment onto the threads I'm just going to take this off the thread on there it's a little bit deep so I'm definitely going to need to use the attachment so I decided I'm gonna go ahead and just use the one and a half inch right here just because I still have a big block coming out of the fender so it's not like I'm trying to hide it I'm just trying to hide the fact of the big ass antenna sticking up past my roof line I think it looks a whole lot better when you look at it from far back you can really notice it on this side I'm not sure how good it comes out on camera but man it really made a difference on this truck got the truck on some jack stands here if you guys saw my other video when I changed out the pitman arm and the idle arm for some reason the idle arm didn't come with the boot on it a dust boot so I did purchase an aftermarket dust boot from energy suspension just going to switch that out real quick and just take care of this here's the dust boot I'm gonna be using from energy suspension there's the part number right there uh, these are actually for tie rod and boot probably a lot of people use these for tie rod but I'm just going to be using it for the idle arm. Cleaning up the idle arm just to make sure there's not any dirt on there. So when I throw on the boot, you know, we'll have some fresh grease in here, which I did throw in, and it'll be well lubricated without any dirt. That was only like a few bucks to go ahead and do that and then I have another one left over just in case any of my other boots should rip that are the same size so as you guys saw real quick switch it out finally got that done one week later all right guys so once again still here with the truck um, what I'm gonna be working on today is the drive shaft when I was driving the truck at certain times it'll start vibrating you know it kind of feels like when you have like a blowout you know it just starts shaking but I looked underneath the truck and now of course I just redid the rear end so possibly it might have been something on the rear end that I might have might have not put on correctly but I looked underneath the truck and the drive shaft the uh, center bearing I'm not sure the mid shaft bearing the bearing had ripped out of the rubber and needs to be replaced. I have the truck jacked up here and on some jack stands. Just take another look at this rear end because I did spend a lot of time on it and I'm pretty proud of myself on how it looks. So that is looking very nice. So here is underneath the truck you guys see the drive shaft. Now all the parts first of all don't look like they ever been changed out since the factory since it was brand new. So it looks like I'm dealing with parts that w are pretty old, so it's understandable that it's going to break at this point. Especially with 
the way of some of the times I've been treating this truck. Here is what broke. It's the center bearing. This is a two-piece drive shaft and the bearing that is in the center. It had broken out of its little rubber molding. It's just kind of loose. So that explains the vibrations that I've experienced while driving the truck. And then here's another look at it. You can kind of see the rubber off to the side. Of course, I'm going to show you guys on what everything looks like, but uh, let's go ahead and try to get this thing off. This is the slip yoke that goes into the transmission. I'm gonna be changing out these universal joints as well. It's from factory, so they need to be changed out anyways. They look pretty rotted and some grease coming out of it. And here we have the bearing that ripped out of the rubber. You guys could probably see it like that. So that really needs to be changed out here. That's the main thing. The other uh, universal joint, you can see some grease been coming out of here. So pretty sure that needs to be changed. And then we have the other universal. So three universal joints and one bearing. So hopefully you guys saw how I got that out. I was just using one of those like C clamps but with the open end and just pushing it one side to the other getting the caps out. Once you get both caps out for on each side it will be able to get loose and then once you get all four sides you'll be able to take it out. But all that is in the caps is some roller bearings. I'm not sure if you guys could see it. I actually broke one of the caps because the center hole wasn't a line and I was just pushing against it and broke the top of the cap but at least I did not damage the yoke or the drive shaft the new universal I'm going to be using is a Spicer universal and here is the part number right there 5-178X and here is what is in the package I obviously have the universal and then it has a spot where you could put in the grease fitting grease fitting is right here along with the clips I just have a little bit of some fine steel wool. That's what I'm gonna use to clean up the holes for the universals. Uh, you guys did see me take off the old bearing with the clamshell bearing separator and using the press. It was a little bit in the way so I don't know how all the angles may look. But I did clean it up with some steel wool, put on some grease on there on the splines, on the threads, and on the journal there. Also took off this other little plate with a screwdriver. I did manage to get a bearing from O'Reilly's from Precision Carrier Bearing. Part number 60106. Here is what is inside of the box. Have some sort of spacers here. I'm guessing because this is a universal bearing or for you know the parts store they include these as well. I'm not going to be using these but here is the bearing looks pretty much like the stock one and it did come with a little shield as well to replace the one I took off 
So I'm going to put the shield on first, then just put on the bearing. Just going to hit it with a hammer, not too hard, but at the same time, going to hit it on each side to make sure it evenly goes on. On this bearing I did have to put on the old shield that was on there from factory let me show you if you guys see there's the factory shield on the back and then I did have to tighten it up I had to watch how how tight I tighten it up or then the bearing won't spin so as far as from what I've heard they said to always crank it on down but I just cranked it down to where I felt enough resistance now what I'm going to do is just connect uh, both of the drive shafts together. I still have these linkages or these brackets here. They just go right onto there. And I've been having the drive shafts exactly how they came off. So I haven't really moved anything. Everything is still aligning from where it was. you can see I'm kind of cramped down here I did put on the bearing you guys can see it's bolted up the yoke is in the transmission and over there I do have it all bolted up to the differential so this is all good to go now pretty much finished as long as everything works as it should all right guys so I have the dry shaft off the next day because when I test drove it it just messed everything up so do not use any of the plate or the spacers that they provide or the old one that Ford has. I'm not even sure how it worked on the original one, but see basically what happened was it cut into the into the bushing and that's not the bad part because it's still intact. I would have been able to use it if I just would have taken it off, but see this metal thing this metal guard or whatever pushed in the bearing little rubber part and so basically the bearing is no good so i mean it still spins smooth but i am not going to use that so i had to buy another another bearing bushing center support and this time i didn't put anything with it everything is completely on I just did the the nut right here for the yoke and spins freely already so we changed out the antenna changed out the polyurethane boot and as well changed out the three universal joints and the bearing now that bearing man let me explain a little bit so at first I had bought the bearing from uh, O'Reilly's right try to put on that shield just because the original uh, bearing had the shield on the drive shaft so I was trying to put on that shield the shield was not working put on the bearing without the shield just to kind of test fit it and see how everything was but that bearing really wasn't spinning freely so you know I tried to actually actually tried it multiple times and the bearing kept feeling the same it would spin but it wasn't spinning real loose and freely installed it with the original shield that was on the drive shaft just because that other new one would not fit so when I installed it like that onto the truck that shield was just cutting into the rubber like I showed you guys and it messed up the outer casing for that bearing so I couldn't use that bearing no more had to buy another bearing decided to put on the bearing without the shield so it won't cut into it and mess up the housing of that bearing and I don't know what it is. It just spin freely unlike the other one. Maybe I had a defective bearing the first time around. I don't really know. 
but at least I got the job done and now you know I test drove the truck I've actually put quite a few miles on it since replacing that bearing and haven't had any issues with it so hopefully this video helped you guys out like I said man uh, it might be a little bit confusing but once you're actually into the work doing the work it'll make a lot more sense but hey man finally at a point where I could just cruise around in the truck you know not worry about anything not any weird noises happening from the truck what have you just a nice cool ride ride around in the city and go do your thing you know what I'm saying but if you stayed to the very end I really do appreciate it and I hope you're subscribed and I hope you drop a comment down below alright guys that's gonna be the end of this video I'm gonna have to catch you on the next one yeah.